First of all, you need to stop getting frustrated when you fail. Now listen, I understand why frustration sets in. I want to give you my personal example. I remember years ago, I was looking for a job, submitting resumes for positions that I knew I was qualified. And even if I wasn't qualified, I think at least based on my uh, experience, I should have gotten those jobs. That's, that was at least my thinking, okay? I didn't get the job many times. So what I did was I collected my rejection letters, okay? And I would comb my rejection letters looking for something that would uh, give me a point of information to help me to improve. Well, most of the time they would just say uh, general statements like, uh, uh, we've moved on with other candidates, uh, your skills don't match the qualifications, you know, that type of stuff. But what I did with that is I decided not to become frustrated because frustration sets in when our expectations do not match the results. And so what you do in the middle is really important. You have to uh, say to yourself, I'm not failing, I'm moving forward. Now there's a difference between quitting and failing, right? Quitting is fatal. You stop, you miss all the opportunities that you would have had in the future because you discontinue putting effort into building your dream life. Instead of getting frustrated, you have to say, listen, I need to fill the gaps. If those rejection letters reveal something about uh, my qualifications based on what I submitted on my resume, I would seek uh, to learn that skill. So fill the gaps. If you don't have any gaps, then you just move to the next opportunity. I'm just using my employment search experience as an example for you. But the reality of it is the biggest room in the world is improvement. You do have gaps. So you have to think like, I'm a lifelong learner and I have always an opportunity to grow and learn from experiences. Don't get frustrated. The second thing you need to do is change your label. So in the process of frustration, you know what happens? We start labeling ourselves. <laughs> we start saying, you know what? Maybe I'm not that good. Maybe I'm not qualified. Maybe I'm not great. Maybe I wasn't meant to be that successful. And what we're doing is we're settling for something that we're truly are not. You are great. Nobody can define your greatness. Nobody can determine your destiny. Nobody has that kind of power. Labels that are negative will create a self-fulfilling prophecy. It will create an image in your mind that you will begin to act out. That's why you cannot have negative labels about yourself. You have to prognosticate yourself as being successful. I know it's hard. It, it, it's, it's difficult when you're not getting to where you want to be. You're not accomplishing the things that you have set out to achieve. You have to keep hoping and change your labels. Words create worlds and you live in the worlds that you create not the environment that you're in. Your environment influences you to go a certain way. That's why it's all about self-leadership and your words will dictate your actions because they are thoughts made audible and then they turn into actions. Change your labels. Stop speaking of yourself in negative uh, terms. Speak of yourself in positive terms. Think of yourself as being great and do the things that great people do. That's why you want to have people around you who can help you to succeed. Positive people. People, yes, who will be constructively critical of your actions, but they will not condemn you. They will tell you the truth. They will be crystal clear about the areas that you need to improve, but they will not suffocate you in negativity. Okay, so you have to change your label, speak positively of yourself, and then act out what it is that you are saying to yourself. And then finally, you have to invest in yourself. Listen, I used to be that guy who didn't understand the true value of making investments in myself, right? See, the investments you make in yourself will yield a return because what you're trying to do is build upon what you have established. And once you get to a certain level in your life, you can't grow until you get something that's greater than you and you put it in your life. That's what an investment is. You're putting more into yourself so that you can get to a different level. That means you need to spend money, time, and work on your talents daily. 
Not someday, not one day, daily. That's why reflection and introspection is so important because you have to take inventory of your life and say, man, did I put enough money into my life to help me to develop this skill? Did I do enough to help me to become stronger in the subject? Did I put in the time, or as the uh, young people say in the urban vernacular, did I put in that work? Are you putting in the work? You have to have metrics set in place to help you to see, am I performing at this level? And then set KPIs. What are my key performance indicators to help me to understand whether or not I'm hitting the mark, right? And, and investments show whether or not you are serious, okay? I spend thousands of dollars in my uh, development. Every year, every year I'm deliberate, I'm uh, intentional, specific about improving certain areas of my life. And sometimes I invest just so that people can reveal areas that I need to improve because we all have blind spots, right? So listen, this is what I'm trying to say to you. You have to be proficient in self-leadership. Avoid getting frustrated, change the labels and invest in yourself. And if you are that brother right now that you're not satisfied with where you are in your journey, take to heart what I'm saying. This is help, not hype. I'm Stephen Gorner, your leadership and growth coach. Take your cues from me and live a great life. Next cue. Let's go, baby.